Welcome to the new version of Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast, the podcast for real estate agents everywhere. I'm Lisa B and together with Beyond Kunzel, we're going to talk about everything real estate. We talk about what's working, what's not working, what's new, what's old, technology and anything else to do with real estate. We'll answer your questions from the Facebook group Let's Talk About Real Estate. So if you have a question, we can help. Join the Facebook group today and again, welcome to the show. Okay. Beyond Kanza, welcome back to Let's Talk About Real Estate. I've missed you as always. Lisa, absolutely fantastic to be here. And today we've got a very special guest. We have the CEO, the founder of EXP, Glenn Sanford. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. Oh, thanks, Bjorn. Thanks, Lisa. Great to, uh, great to be here. Now, we're going to get stuck straight into it, Glenn, because we know that uh, time is money and that you're a very busy man. So what I would like to ask you firstly is, where did you get the inspiration to create EXP? Where did you come up with the ideas, the foresight for the model, including the technology, the systems and the resources that's led to such phenomenal growth that we've experienced in the last few years? Yeah, so, um, you know, I got into real estate in 2002. I come out of um, being more of a kind of a technology entrepreneur. I'd started a number of businesses. And um, I got pulled into real estate, uh, um, not really by choice, but because one, I needed some income and, and somebody guaranteed me to, uh, a monthly stipend to be in real estate. So that's how I got into it. But I came on with a really technology mindset and I wanted to actually grow a business that was truly scalable. And what I quickly recognized is that as much as we were sold on the idea that we own a real estate business, the, the reality is, is that there's not any compelling infrastructure to actually provide that platform. So I, I refer to it as a business we're sold as owning, but in 98, 99% of cases, the business owns you as an, as an agent, because if you're not out listing and selling real estate, you're out of business. And, and that, in my mind, doesn't actually represent a real business. So I'd had some mentors over the years that shared with me what it meant to own businesses. I'd been around. My dad was an entrepreneur. He had built a fairly scaled business. And I saw the benefits that that created. And for me, I said, how do I actually create something that actually works for me and my family long term? And I've always found that if I have an issue, if I have a challenge, then what I've what I've recognized, and, and that's not easily solved in the marketplace, then my guess is that there's a lot of other people with that same challenge. And if they have the same challenge, then maybe I should focus on not just solving it for me, but what if I could solve it for lots of people? And, and so that became kind of the inspiration of how do I actually build a business where an agent, when they get into the business, they actually truly have own a business and it has the underpinnings, the foundational elements to actually scale and produce, you know, the types of benefits that business owners are, are so used to. Of course, in, in, in business, we see it all around. I mean, you, you, Australia is no different than the United States or Canada or Europe, wherever. Uh, businesses that are well run, you know, people that go in, they build it up and eventually they kind of are able to move into more of a shareholder owner capacity from being sort of that boots on the ground, rolling up the sleeves and doing the work every day. And, and so that's where I, I was trying to figure out how do I build that same sort of benefits package into EXP? And that was really the inspiration. It was like, I recognized that, um, that it was a business that really didn't have a retirement. Um, there was one company, Keller Williams, I don't know how big they are down there, but in the U.S., they kind of had created uh, an idea of a retirement plan for real estate agents, but it was tied to the profitability of the local offices. And, and so what we figured out was that if you get rid of the physical bricks and mortar, that you could actually create something with much more predictable income and opportunities for the actual agents boots on the ground than if you had to support a lot of physical you know infrastructure 
And again, my my tech background helped because I recognized that you know, high speed internet now on our phones is uh, is better than the high speed internet we had at our in our houses, you know, 15 years ago. And and I knew that that was just going to continue to get better. So why not just adopt the technologies starting in 2009 that would ultimately you know be in place as we continue to scale and grow? That's fantastic. fantastic. All right. So EXP has been in Australia for three years now. For those that are sitting back doubting the company, potentially putting us in the same basket as some of the ones that have entered the Australian market and haven't made it. What would you say to them? How does EXP differ? And what reassurances can you give Australian real estate agents that EXP won't be another here today, gone tomorrow model? Yeah, so, you know, I don't know a lot of the players that have entered the Australian market. The only one that I can think of specifically was Purple Bricks. I don't know if that's the the one that you're thinking top of mind, but, you know, th- that model didn't work anywhere. It didn't even work in the UK. Like, they're literally sort of in this receivership kind of mode now, even there. Um, and and they, they attempted to lead with... Uh, with discounts and sort of almost cutting out the real estate professional and and just doing a whole bunch of stuff that really uh, wasn't conducive for the industry. It was also very capital intensive. When I think about real estate agency um, around the world, uh, and this is almost every country, with the in the U.S. and Canada, we're kind of unique in that we have what we refer to as a multiple listing service which means that I can be working for one firm, you can be working for another firm, and we can actually share inventory and sell from the same basket of, 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 of real estate. It's actually pretty good. It, it's, it's great for an agent. It it's allows for agents to get better compensation because now they can move to an, ag- an agency that gives them better compensation because they have access to all the same inventory. Uh, in, in most places around the world, what, what I've seen outside of the U.S. And, and Canada is that real estate agents are employed in a way that isn't actually um, very conducive to their income and lifestyle. And, and that, was the, that was the thing that I recognized in, in some markets, um, you know, the typical split for an agent is a 50-50 split. I don't know what it is specifically in, the, in Australia, but I know that that's what it was a number of years ago. Same. And- and uh, and and there was no what we refer to as a cap. So for for if you're not familiar with with uh, what, well the split everybody should know about if you're a real estate agent you're you know the house is taking a certain percentage of your income and um, hopefully you're getting some benefit from it. I don't know what, but you're getting some benefit from being part of that system. Uh, and and then you get a portion of it, and that's how you pay your bills and 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 that type of thing. But when when we think about a um, a, a, a modern model, uh, you know the, a lot of the legacy infrastructure isn't needed. Consumers are online; they're searching online; they're doing all of everything online. And if they go to an office, they're doing it because you told them to meet them there, not maybe because they actually want to meet you there. Um, you know, they they need to know what you have to listed for sale, but they can find that out online. Um, and and then you can do a lot of the need analysis. And one of the challenges I see in in more traditional agencies, not you know, I'm, and this is this is just a a, a guy that born in Canada, you know, lived in the U.S., been sort of in the real estate industry for a while. But I'm looking sort of into sort of third party. Is that there's not a really great way to share inventory and information in. Australia, at least that's my perception. Um, and and so one of the things that I'm seeing is that we're starting to get some critical mass. And it's also one of the things when we, we created an aligned compensation model. And what I mean by that is that our agents are actually receiving benefit for helping the company expand. They also become shareholders from doing the, the same activities that every agent would do anywhere where else they, they're out you know, securing listings, they're helping, you know, the buyers and sellers come together, put the deals together. And now they're actually getting an ownership interest in the brokers they're a part of. I actually think that that will eventually become the norm. Um, and so 
when I think I don't, for us, we're a low cost to operate model, um, which, which is, has extra benefits uh, for you as an agent, because if it doesn't cost much for us to support the, 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 the infrastructure, we can take the profits, the revenues, the other things and pour it back in to actually helping, you know, with what tools do you, do you need, what innovations need to be, you know, invested in, and then how do we leverage this to create an ecosystem that has some of the same types of benefits that um, the, the U.S. and Canadian type agents would have and be able to share inventory, to be able to share opportunities to, instead of a consumer having to bounce between, as a buyer, bounce between agency and agent and agent and agency to find a property, it, we're actually starting to build up a, a book of business that allows uh, for sharing of commissions um, and actually building out unique ways to allow you as a consumer to work with one agent throughout your 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 property buying and selling journey and and that i think makes it a lot more um uh relevant to today's modern consumer as well so um for, for us i don't see any well one we've been the fastest growing real estate agency i think in australia or or, or close to it um our, our cost to operate is fairly low because we don't have a lot of physical infrastructure. We need support, which is, by the way, the single biggest cost to a real estate brokerage, whether it be a Ray White or whatever, doesn't matter what the brand is. Um, the single biggest cost is the physical bricks and mortar infrastructure, which is not cheap, by the way. In a down market, which I, I don't know what it's going on in Australia, but here we've got real estate sales are off 30, 40% year over year. Um, but when you go into a down market, you know, if you've got a lot of physical bricks and mortar expenses, um, it's going to be hard for you to sort of stay in business. And that's one of the reasons why they, they're able to, well, not able to, but that's one of the reasons why they've had to charge high splits to begin with, is to sort of make sure that they're prepared for a down market. In EXP, we can actually treat the agent as the business owner. And, and so that makes it super sustainable over time. Well, I've got to say, Glenn, as an agent who's living it, it's working for me 100%. So, um, but what would you say to other top performing agents that are watching this um, that are maybe considering EXP for their business? Any message that you'd like to give them? Well, here, here's the, you know, there there's different stages for every, every, every real estate agent. So I think about EXP almost like a subdivision. You know, think about a, a real estate subdivision. I don't know what you call them there, but I, think I suspect subdivision. So you've got you've yeah. got a big plot of land, and then all of a sudden somebody says, "Hey, let's divide that plot of land up into sixty-four different parcels, and we're going to put the roads in, and then we're going to start to we're going to build a model home, and then we're going to start to to maybe build a few custom homes and some spec homes, and and eventually the the development's built out, and there are some agents that are going to recognize it the moment you mention, I'm thinking about doing something with this plot of land. And, um, and, and so they're in there, they're taking a little bit of ego risk, a little bit of financial risk, and they're getting involved early on. Guess what? As a real estate agent, they're likely going to represent a ton of that inventory because they were early on. Um, eventually, some have to actually see the roads in. I mean, you see the utilities in, the electricity, the sewer, the water being in place. They need to see, um, you know, what, where all the houses are going to sit. So they need that visual representation. Some some agents will get involved there. Some have to see what is the type of construction that's going to go on in the neighborhood for me to you know be willing to represent somebody to potentially buy and sell. But then there's eventually the, the the type of person that once it's all built out and they can understand it and they can actually see it in their mind's eye, they're like, oh yeah, I can, I can go list a property there. I can, I can help a, a seller out or a buyer out, et cetera. And so who, who in that equation, you know, ultimately did the best. And, and it was, it was the one that recognized it early on in the process. And it's really no different. Uh, the nice thing is, is that the roads are in, the utilities are in, um, you know, the model homes are in, 
uh, you know, you know what's 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 in the future. Like it doesn't actually take a lot of rocket science to see the opportunities that EXP you know presents to a real estate agent in Australia now. It's still fairly early on. So that what that means is that there's still a ton of upside to get involved today. Then, by the way, I don't think there'll ever not be upside, but I think there's just way more upside if you can get them, if you can mentally get your head around what the EXP model represents for the future. And so for 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 me, um, if if I was if I'm an entrepreneurial agent, somebody who's who's about being creative and wanting to be sort of closer into the ground floor and don't want to be in the future going, I wish I I wish I would have, I I should have, I could have, you know, don't look back and regret uh, based on something that exists today that for all intents and purposes has been proven. We're operating in 24 countries now. We're, we're the faster growing real estate brokerage in US, Canada, UK, South Africa, UK, France, Germany, India, Mexico. I mean, there's a bunch of countries where the fastest growing real estate brokerage. Um, Australia is also uh, one of the markets we've been in for obviously a few years now, but it's also one of the markets that actually we're actually making money in now, meaning that we're past the having to put money into it just to keep it going. And, and that's actually a good place to be involved because uh, it means that it's sustainable um, as a company. If you would have joined two years ago, we were injecting money in. Now, we believe because we knew the math, we knew what it should do, uh, you know, but it was, it was still an unknown because Australia was a fairly new country for us. Outside of North America, we opened up UK and Australia as our first two countries outside of North America. Um, so it was a bit of a crapshoot as to whether it was going to work or not. The science experiments look like it would make sense, but now it actually makes sense. So it's actually probably the best time for an agent who's you know serious about looking at their long-term 5, 10, 15 year career in real estate going forward. You know, if you're only going to be for a year or two more, who cares where you hang your license? But if you actually plan on being in this business for the next 10, 15, 20 years, you should make a move like, today like maybe yesterday yeah and we've only just started so watch this space and it's and it's not only australia it's global so that's that's the exciting thing as well all righty so when we joined we had i think fourteen thousand agents in and in a few countries can you tell us how the company has achieved such amazing growth like the, from fourteen thousand to 86 or eighty-seven thousand agents now in such a short time how did we do that yeah, so we focused on the most important individual in the real estate industry, um, you know, and that is the real estate agent, which is 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 totally different than anyone else. Most people are most companies are in the business of selling franchises, and the franchises are in the business of recruiting agents, but they're not recruiting agents for the benefit of the agent. They're doing recruiting agents for the benefit of the franchisee. Um, and, and so they need they, they they need the five, ten, fifteen people or more. But I know that a lot of offices are fairly small there. But they need that core group of salespeople to sort of support that that agency. But there's no upside to the individual agent other than they're going to do a few deals every year, whatever that number is. They might do 10, 15, 20, 30 deals a year, fifty deals a year, whatever that is. But the agent, the minute they quit selling, they they, they they effectively out of business. And, and so the franchisee has to keep on churning through and recruiting more agents back into their shop. I suspect it's no different in Australia as it is anywhere else in the world, but they basically have to sort of keep on this like internal small recruiting engine because there's no reason why an agent left to their own devices would stay in that environment for a long period of time if there wasn't any upside. So they'll either go and start buy their own franchise or figure out how they can get some equity ownership interest or whatever it is. But the EXP is already built in. Um, and, and so that's what makes it such a unique model because we're, we're built for the agent first. Um, even as a, as a and, and that's why we've been growing. That's why we're 86,000 plus agents. That's why we're, we're the fastest growing real estate brokerage in the history of residential real estate. We didn't 
didn't raise money from outside capital uh, because we weren't trying to engineer something on behalf of shareholders. We were engineering it on behalf of agents who then become shareholders. And, and it's just a totally different way that to approach it. So, you know, we, um, we're, we are a public company, as you know, um, we trade on the, the NASDAQ in the United States. Um, so, and, and um, but the, uh, the shareholders that we do have on our cap table, they actually do go buy it in the open market because we didn't have to raise money, which is pretty cool. Awesome. Well, I can say, Glenn, there's definitely been a lot of phenomenal growth. And as an agent in Australia, I just absolutely love this model. But do we have any vision for the next 12 months, five years, 10 years, 20 years of where we see EXP going as not only just here in Australia, but as a global com company, obviously integrating with, with some of the new technologies that are coming out as well? So yeah, so we um, be? I don't know what. Yeah, so um, I think we, we're going to become however big we we. We, we should, and I mean that in all sincerity, that if we are an agent-centric model, I think there's always going to be, um, there's always going to be multiple brands. Um, and, and, but I think that the cloud-based model is the future model of real estate. And there'll be some other companies that show up with their version of a cloud-based model. Uh, but if I, but if I look at, if we if we just had five percent right now, we're coming up on about five percent of agents in the United States. Um, we're we're certainly well below that in Canada, and certainly well below that in in Australia. Uh, but if I think about the idea that if we become just five percent of the industry worldwide, uh, there's about twenty million real estate professionals worldwide, which would would give us a, a population of upwards of a million agents on the EXP platform. Um, and that's, of course, assuming that we get to all of the markets that we could get into. Uh, let's assume that we only get to half of them. If we grow to 10%, we could still get to a million agents. And, uh, and, and so I look at certain brands uh, in the U.S. Uh, we've got Keller Williams is um, something around 10% of the market. I think we'll, we'll overtake them in the U.S. In, uh, by 2024, 2025. Uh, in terms of agent count. So I think the idea of some choice between 5 and 15% of agent count in a given market, uh, I think could be an EXP agent. I think, I don't know that we'll grow how much larger than that. Certainly, we're going to continue to iterate on the agent value proposition. But I also recognize that as agents, they may not all want to be part of the exact same brand uh, from a differentiation perspective. So there's always going to be room for boutiques and other other unique brands. But as a cloud-based brokerage, I think we'll be the largest. I do too. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so just to finish off, so what else can you share with us about EXP? What do real estate agents need to know moving forward about EXP? Um, well, the first, first and foremost, and you probably already figured that out a little bit, but EXP is an agent to agent business, meaning that we do have some corporate infrastructure, but the actual bringing, uh, if, if you want to learn about EXP, um, it's really through other agents that you learn about EXP. What's the models, the systems, the tools, the technologies? Uh, and also, uh, the collaboration and the mentorship comes by basically building this really cool network of agents and brokers. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that you'll immediately get access to, which is pretty incredible, to it, really, if you think about it, uh, but Bjorn, you, you reached out to me uh, on Workplace, our internal intranet. Uh, the minute that you join EXP, you're not joining... Uh, EXP in Adelaide, Australia. Now you may be because that's where you physically live, but you're joining a network of 86, 87,000 agents in 24 countries that you can immediately start to mastermind, brainstorm and collaborate with. And that's an incredibly powerful networking tool to actually level up your game quickly. If you want to build a mastermind group 
of top agents in multiple countries that you can then now go back into your local marketplace and say, hey, we're going to start masterminding on the, the on the top listing practices of with agents in 24 countries. Uh, how would you like to be part of that? Who's going to say no? You know, it's going to be it's good. And 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 to be able to do that literally from from your your computer or 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 what have you, you'll be able to be connected, uh, you know, right away. But it's really it's an agent to agent business. It's it's us individual folks on the ground that's in the trenches selling real estate, which is who you're going to learn about the EXP model from, uh, which makes this very very unique. Um, and and so again, you know, one, even if you don't come to EXP, um, I think it's it, it's important to understand what you may be so, saying no to, and you may have very valid reasons to say no, but make make sure you actually understand EXP from somebody who is actually doing it at a high level, you know, in country or even internationally. Uh, you know, find out what why EXP was for them, because you know that that is where sort of the it's going to match up with maybe what you're doing and how you're approaching the business. You've got a lot of pioneers in Australia uh, that have already figured out you know how, why it works for them, and uh, and 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 they're masterminding all the time on how to make it better. And I, I see it on on social. I see it in workplace. I see it in various different channels. Um, so you probably will be, even have a more exciting real estate career just by being around EXP agents. I agree. I 100% agree, Glenn. And as somebody who's living it as an agent, I think I was the 13th agent in Australia, and I'm I was proud to be the first icon agent of. Icon every year, and I, and today I've got a settlement which puts me onto my third icon consecutively in a row. So when you talked about the development, I've come in when somebody said, "Hey, let's do a development," and I had no idea what the development was going to look like. I had no idea what to expect, but I can say from an operating agent, it's not very many businesses out there where you can be one of eighty-seven thousand people and be sitting here talking to a CEO and founder of a company. So, on behalf of all the agents in Australia. In my team in South Australia, in in the world, thank you so much for creating this model. Because if you knew some of the stories of the thirty seven people in my team, how it's changed their lives, I could give you five or six stories that would that would bring tears to your eyes with the with the impact that this model has had on those agents' lives. So thank you very very much. God bless you. I know that you've just recovered from COVID, so we really appreciate your time. Thanks for being with us. Awesome. Thanks, Bjorn. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have a question about real estate, then please join the group on Facebook, also called Let's Talk About Real Estate. For those of you who are interested in EXP, please join us at 10 a.m. Brisbane time every Wednesday morning for EXP Explained. Thank you again for joining us and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and see you next week.